Hello there guys, today I have something that seems kind of out of left field compared to the rest of the content on this channel, but it's not like I haven't teased aspects about this in my videos before. I love biology. I love thinking about the ways organisms, particularly animals, evolve and the roles they've had in the natural history of our planet. In fact, I probably watch more videos on YouTube about biology than anything about movies, shows, or video games. If you were to ask me about some of my favorite YouTube channels, I'd say Ben G. Thomas would definitely be up there in the top five, since he and his co-star Doug talk a lot about this stuff. About two years ago, he uploaded a three-part video series talking about the history of speculative zoology, a much more fictional form of scientific literature and art that's all about how animals could evolve in certain scenarios like if a mass extinction never happened, or the kinds of creatures that will inhabit our planet long after we humans go extinct. That latter example will be much more important in just a moment. It was because of these videos that I first learned about the book After Man, A Zoology of the Future, released in 1981 by paleontologist and author Dougal Dixon. The most I knew about Dixon up to that point was that he was the author of many prehistoric animal encyclopedias that I had read in my teen years. Encyclopedias that are now outdated, but he still works in publishing today and has even made some really good paleontology-based books for kids with modern information. As for After Man, I had received a copy of the 2018 re-release two Christmases ago, and I have been wanting to talk about it for quite some time now. I'll link the Benji Thomas videos in the description if you want a basic idea of what After Man is, but I highly recommend reading it for yourself if you can find a copy. To summarize it for the purposes of this video though, it imagines a world 50 million years into the future, showing the alteration of Earth's habitats and how the bizarre new forms of wildlife have adapted to fit them. The book explores many variables in evolution, such as niches and ecology structures, but the real stars of the show are the creatures themselves. Some of my favorites being the phalanx, a rat that is now an active predator like a wolf, the vortex, a penguin that's taken over the role of modern whales after they went extinct, and probably the most iconic animal to come out of the book, a terrestrial bat called the night stalker that walks on its front limbs and grabs things with its back limbs. How cool is that? The book was relatively successful back in the 1980s, and in the early 1990s, it was adapted into other forms of media, most notably in Japan where it spawned a traveling exhibit with models, a stop-motion documentary, and an anime film. You can easily find clips on YouTube from the documentary, as well as the intro for the anime, which Dougal Dixon even references in the 2018 re-release of the book. The clips are pretty poor quality, and the fact that neither the documentary nor the anime were ever localized for the West has contributed to them essentially becoming lost media. I would love to see both of these in their entirety, and if no one's going to bother dubbing them, at least find the original film reels and run them through an HD transfer. In the years after After Man, Dixon continued to be involved in other speculative evolution multimedia projects, including two sequel books, The New Dinosaurs in 1988 and Man After Man in 1990 which unfortunately have never been reprinted, so they're very expensive, and the latter book being poorly received. Dixon also heavily contributed, in ways I'll explain later, to the 2002 documentary series The Future is Wild, which was based on the concept of his book, and itself later spawned a Canadian animated series in 2007. But Dixon's original work has endured as such a revolutionary project that, while not necessarily mainstream today, has actually inspired a lot more in pop culture than you may initially think. Everything from the future predators in the BBC series Primeval to the environments of Skull Island in the 2005 King Kong film can be attributed as having some influence from After Man. In addition to giving those Japanese adaptations of After Man a long overdue remaster and localization, I would also like to propose that After Man, a zoology of the future, should get a proper Hollywood film adaptation, hopefully as true to the source material as possible. But that's already been tried, kinda. In the 2018 re-release of the book, Dixon says, and I quote, Then Hollywood optioned it in the early 1990s and held on to it for 20 years before giving up on it. I deny any association with any cinema film on a similar theme or even an almost identical name that has been released in that period. He is of course referring to the M. Night Shyamalan film After Earth, which I have never seen so I don't know if or how it was inspired by After Man, but Dixon didn't really go into specifics about Hollywood's holding of the rights to the Afterman IP. As it turns out, they were first bought by DreamWorks SKG and still had them by the time The Future is Wild was being created. But since DreamWorks wouldn't let the series legally use the creatures from Afterman, 
Dougal Thixon's big contribution to it was designing every creature for the 5 million, 10 million, and 200 million year time periods depicted in the episodes. After the rights expired from DreamWorks, they were picked up by Paramount, and as far as anyone knows, they still have them, but nothing has come of it. If I were to guess, I'd say Hollywood has been reluctant to use those rights to make an Afterman film, since modern cinema goers likely aren't familiar with the original book or the influences it has had on bigger media, and therefore aren't interested in speculative biology as the concept for a movie. But that's only compounded by the fact that they've been holding onto those rights and not willing to try and spark some interest. If done right, I think an Afterman movie could start another, much bigger revolution in speculative natural science in pop culture. Then again, would audiences really pay to see a movie where the premise involves Earth in the future as it's no longer dominated by humans? Of course they would. Now, would they do so if the premise also involved humans having gone extinct? Eh, okay, I can't think of a film where they've gone completely extinct, but close. I know the thought of humans going extinct may be heavy for some, even though it will happen eventually. Maybe an Afterman film doesn't have to spell things out as being that dark. Maybe it can be an animated film for kids that follows one of the cuter species as a main protagonist. Or if Hollywood requires that there be a relatable human element, maybe it could be a live-action sci-fi drama where humans somehow travel to the future and research and or survive from the new and wild creatures. Or heck, the live-action Lion King proved that you can do an entire movie of CGI realistic animals, so maybe that, but since it's not based on something that already appeals to kids, they could go a little darker in tone. Then again, Lion King cost at least a quarter billion to make, so an after-man film like that would be a huge gamble. Oh, there was also the 2013 Walking with Dinosaurs movie that was also realistic, but primarily targeted towards kids, and surprisingly, that only cost $80 million. Though it didn't make all that much, and was poorly received by critics and audiences, even though I will admit that I liked it. Still, $80 million makes you wonder where most of the Lion King's budget went, considering it's three times larger. And if an Afterman film is live action, I hope they utilize some practical effects like puppets or animatronics, because I would love to see what the teams behind the practical effects of the Jurassic World or Star Wars sequel trilogy films could do to create something like the Night Stalker. I'm not scared of actual bats or the Night Stalker design on paper, but to see a photorealistic CGI or practical effect one running around, that would scare the heck out of me. All in all, I guess After Man doesn't have a lot to work with in terms of plot, so it could go in any number of directions. Animated or live action CGI hybrid for PG or PG-13, uh, all I really hope is that it tells a good story and includes as many familiar animals from the book as possible. And Dixon is getting up there in years, so I'm sure he would love to see an After Man film in his lifetime. Please, Hollywood, or Paramount, or whoever, do it for him. And do it because you're sitting on what could potentially be a gold mine if done right. Also, Dixon should definitely be brought on as a consultant, so that this adaptation goes as smooth as possible. Anyway, feel free to let me know in the comments if you had ever heard of this book before, and if you want a movie based on it, and what you think the movie should be like. Don't forget that you're also welcome to leave a like and subscribe, and doing so will let me know if you want me to do more videos about obscure science-y things that I like. With all that said, I hope you enjoyed, have a nice day, and thank you for your time.